lift those to us this morning. Let's bless the name of the Lord for this great time in his presence. Register yourself right in his presence with your thanksgiving now. He said, enter into his gate and come into his court with thanksgiving. Lift your voice. Let God hear you. Let it be loud. Let it be strong. Let it be loud. Let it be strong. Celebrate him. Step into his presence. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. That is the only way we register ourselves with him. Let your voice be loud. Let your voice be strong. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege of appearing in your presence. I'm grateful, Lord. I'm grateful, Lord. I'm grateful, Lord. I'm grateful, Lord. Robe di zele balo to media ba do kopadia di jadia gloss ozia ruato pedish. We thank you. You have been so good. You have been so gracious. We thank you for your love, for your compassion that fails not. We thank you. Thank you. We sleep every day. We wake up every morning because your power has kept sustaining us. Take all the glory, our Father. Take all the praise, our Father. Bero jalabalado zezia kero abade jadesh. We give you the praise, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. That amen can be stronger. For those testimony this morning, awesome, mighty, strange acts of God. Let's give him a big clap offering. Amen. I say amen. The last brother that gave that testimony, 54 years today, only survivor in his family. The devil was out to erase that family, but the mercy of God kept him. Clap for Jesus again. Amen. Hallelujah. No matter how the storm is raging, God will keep you the power of God will keep you. So don't be afraid of the devil. He's only, make, he's only running like a lion. He's not one. From today, every roaring of the devil will be met with vengeance from God. That amen can be stronger. But a particular note is that brother that God delivered from death, the vehicle fell into the river. That is, according to the story, according to his testimony, his first story, building high. Amen. And here is alive today. He said, two men came out of the river. Came out from the river. Probably they were sleeping in the river. <laughs> or probably they have their house in the river. That must be angelic manifestation to me. To me. Because God is saying, this total do shall not be taken. Hear me very well. Every mark of death over anyone, this morning, that mark is erased. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But very important, please, he made a statement and I, need, I want to put it right. No matter the situation you find yourself, saying the name of Jesus must not get out of your mind. It must not go off. So that statement he made was a slip of the, st of the tongue. Yes, when you find yourself in some funny situation. Your mind can go blank. But that, that is why, as a believer, you train yourself. You push that name to your subconscious. Because what is in your subconscious is what will jump out at the point where your consciousness feels. So you consciously push it there. And you consciously push some scriptures there. Thank God he has pushed the worth, the power of serving God into his subconscious. That was why when he was going down and his brain has disappeared, the subconscious came out. Is it one hand that I will use to be bringing water to the children? And then God responded. Hear me? At every point of challenge that the enemy is out to snuff life out of you, heaven will always respond for you. Heaven will always respond to you. Once again, leave those to us and let's thank God again for those testimonies. Thank God again for those testimonies. Thank God again for those testimonies. Mm, I am grateful. Oh, 
We are grateful. faithfulness towards us. Thank you. Despite the difficult situation in the land and globally, you have been providing for our needs. You have been meeting us at every point of need. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And thank you for calling us to this banqueting hall. You have placed a banner over us breaking every generation across. Thank you. You chose us and you caused us to be here today. Thank you. Now that we are at your feet, Father, we know and we are sure that you never cause your children to seek you in vain. You never cause your people to approach unto you and return empty. Therefore, Father, in that name that is above every other name, Jesus the Christ, we pray no one here this morning that will return empty and dead. This service shall answer to his name in everyone's life. Every curse shall be broken. Father, send us your word this moment. Let your word run swiftly in our midst. Let your word gain entrance to every heart. Let the light of the word shine upon us. We vow that all the glory will return unto you. Thank you for doing it. And thank you for doing it. Let every tear be wiped off the face of each one today. Let every sweat be taken off the brow of everyone today. Thank you for doing it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can they may be louder and better? Please clap for Jesus. You may be gratefully seated in his presence. Praise the Lord. Photon is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. This service shall be your service. The Holy Spirit is saying clearly this morning, I will save all. I will save all. Meaning, whatever is the situation that makes you to be troubled, salvation has come. And your escape is guaranteed. In Jesus' mighty name. Is our breaking generational crisis service? 
uh, before we go into that and get ready, God will always perform his word, so he will perform it in your life today. We have been on the subject of serving God and the interest of his kingdom peace the unmatchable. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom peace like none other. And today is part four. And in this four service, by the privilege of heaven, I'm taking the first leg of it, part 4A. Amen. Life is ordained and designed to be profitable. That's God's, that's God's ordination, God's design. Profit means increase, growth, advancement, things getting better. No matter the situation, no matter the environment you find yourself. For a child of God, life is ordained to be on the increase, to be, to be profitable, to be getting better by the day. And when profit is lacking, life becomes frustrating. It is the reason why you see men are troubled. When you are the same level you were two years ago, and the same level last year, the same level today, then the future looks, appears bleak, that there is no future. So, the individual will become, will be getting worried. But hear me very well, from today, you are advancing. Yeah. You are advancing. Yeah. And that is what we mean by serving God pays or matchable. It will deliver profit that no other can bring. It will advance the life of a man like no other thing can make happen. It will bring increase and growth in all areas of a man's life like no other thing can make happen. Like no other activity, no other engagement can make happen. Lift your hand up now. In the name of Jesus the Christ, your advancement will be unstoppable from now. Yeah. Let me allow them, amen. Yeah. That is the reason why we must take serving God as a business, not as a casual thing. It must be business for it to work. It takes a serious approach to have a glorious result. So if serving, serving God will deliver, it must become a business to the believer. And the scripture says it's business indeed. Now, let's quickly look into this subject again this morning. The platform that the believer can engage in this service. The scriptural ways that we can engage in serving God, in the service of God. We look at one in this first service. And that is praying for the flow of the word from the altar. Praying, praying for the flow of the word of eternal life from the altar. That is one vital way the believer can serve God. Praying for the flow of the word of eternal life from our altar. Now, please understand, serving God, we have defined it as activities, engaging in activities that brings growth or that will bring growth to the church, to God's kingdom. It is, it will be registered, it will be known, it will be recorded as serving God when what we are doing is bringing growth, is bringing increase, is bringing enlargement to God's kingdom, is bringing enlargement to the church. And for good understanding, the kingdom of God is measured or is built with the souls of men. God's house, God's kingdom is built with the souls of men. That means the more the souls, the larger the house. Or the bigger the kingdom. How do I know that? First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. So when what we are doing is not enlarging the kingdom, enlarging God's house, bringing increment, we are only busy bodies in the church here to be serving him. Look at it in first Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Ye also, that's talking about the believer, as lively stones, as what? Are built up. A spiritual house. Ye also, the children of God, believers, you are the stones that is used in building 
the house of God. So the more of the stones you have, the larger the house can be built. The bigger the house can be built. The more the expansion that can be done to the house. So when our activity does not add souls to the kingdom, we are not building the kingdom. We are not increasing the kingdom. We can be very busy. We can be very active. We can be sweating a lot. But when it is not adding souls to the kingdom, that is yet recorded as building the kingdom. And serving God is the activities that will bring increase and build the church. Amen. It's the reason why you see very many active people in church that don't reflect the blessing. Because their activity is here to be registered as service. So don't just be busy and active. Ensure that your being active is building as it is hardening. Souls. Getting them into the kingdom and getting them established in the kingdom. That is service. So you see some people in church, they seem not to be active, but they are reflecting the blessing. This is how heaven marks believers. Whereas somebody is active, is in church every time and do everything, that is good. I'm not speaking low of that. But make sure that it culminates in what will make heaven to mark you as a builder. When you are at a site where they are building a house, you resume before the manager comes to the site, before the engineer comes to the site, and you close when everybody has gone. And you are running around, but you don't carry one block. You don't carry one shovel. You don't carry one bag. You are just busy talking to everybody and entertaining everybody and just encouraging everybody and oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, now, oh, yeah, now, oh, yeah, now. And you are meant to be a bricklayer that should be putting block on one or the other and then plastering it or pasting it, cementing it with a mortar. And you didn't do anything, you were only just talking. When they want to pay them at the end of the day, will you be counted as one of the workers? So don't just be one person there. Make sure you are putting the stones. You put the stone. You put another stone. You put another stone. You are, that's how to build the kingdom. Amen. Now, back to the point I, talk, I, I, spe- I said, which is praying for the flow of the word of eternal life from the altar. Understand, the word of God is the print, principal tool for building the kingdom. How? It is the word. It is through the word or by the word that the heart of men can be touched. It is the word of God that can convict men, convince men, and convert them and get them to be rooted in the church. The word. The word. John chapter 6, verse 66 to 68. After Jesus spoke one day, the disciples, all the disciples got angry. You know, Jesus had more disciples than the twelve. The twelve were just the principal officers to, they are like the staff in the office to assist him in the work. But he had multiple disciples. He had Nicodemus, who was a priest, who came at night. He didn't want anybody to see him. He had Joseph of Arimathea, who was a politician, high-ranking politician, who took his body after he, after he died. He had the wife of one of the uh, politicians in town, also called Salome, who was constantly ministering to, to him with, with her goods. Too many, many disciples. One time he called, after the 70, he called, after the 12, he called another 70 disciples to send them out. And it was said, when he was to ascend, 500 men gathered to see him ascend. And at the end of the day, when the Holy Ghost would come down, 120 was left. The other 380 disappeared to go and buy something in the market or to go and do something. So he had more than the 12 disciples. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. So when he spoke to them in, that, in John chapter 6, all the disciples left. And he was only left with 12. I mean, take it that he had 500 disciples because that's the highest we saw. He had 500. A church of 500 disappeared. He had service last Sunday, 500 people gathered. By today, only 12. He said, the one you preached last Sunday, you know, we don't like her. We are not coming to church again. And then he looked at them in chapter 66 of John 6. He said, the others have gone. Won't you go? Then Peter told him in verse 68, where do we go? You have the word of eternal life. That word of eternal life is what convicts men. 
convince it will convince them and keep them. So you want to build the kingdom by making souls to be added, then we need to have the word. And for that word to keep coming, it is by prayer we do that. So when you give yourself to pray, oh God, send the word of eternal life that when man hears it, their heart will be touched and then they will turn their life over to Jesus. You are doing what will make the kingdom of God to be built. Because you are doing what will make souls to come. Amen. And then everyone registers you. While you are doing that, nobody will see you because that's what you do in your room. Is this why I said? To, to, you see some people, they just look like they are not doing anything in church. But heaven writes their name as key servants. Key servants. Because such, such men we never come to a church, to a service and not spend at least 30 minutes. Rakapodia, Ezezia, Lope. Oh God, we don't want to hear the words of pastor. We want to hear your word. Let your word flow through him. I don't care what, the, what he has prepared. I know you have given him words, but when he stands on that order, speak to him. Cause men, cause us not to see him. Let us see you, Jesus. He's praying with his heart. He's not looking at anybody to see him, but he's praying from his heart with the intention, I want to see the kingdom built. Oh God, altar call must not be made that sinners will not be touched. Everyone that is not saved, oh God, as the altar call is made, spirit of God, you will touch their heart. You will bring them out. And then you are waiting eagerly when the altar call is made, as they are coming out. Yeah, as they are not coming out, oh God, I prayed. You answer prayer. That is how to serve. That is how heaven will register you as a servant. And when heaven registers a man as a servant, his case is settled. Lift your hand up now. Grace to serve in deed and in truth. From now, receive it in the name of Jesus. That amen is too weak. That amen can be louder. The word. Acts 13 44. Popular scripture that we, read, we used to read. He said, and the next Sabbath day, he said, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of the Lord. They didn't come together to do, to do service. They came again to the church. One thing that brought them, the word. The word is what brings men. The word is what saves men. The word is what establishes men. We need to keep praying for God to keep sending that word. And it is only the word that God sends that we touch men. He sent his word. Psalm 107 verse 20. And the word. The word healed them. So we need to pray, oh God, send your word. Send your word. That is a vital way to serve God. And then, the blessing of service keeps speaking. Lift your heart up again now. I decree the baptism of the spirit of grace and supplication on you now. Say louder, you may know. They prayed in Acts chapter 6 verse 4. And the word of God increased, verse 7. And when the word of God increased, the number of disciples multiplied. So let's let everyone, do my voice this morning, make a decision. From today, heaven, oh God, count me as one of those who can rely. That we wait on you before any service to pray for your word to flow in that service. When everyone sees you that, that way and they tell you as one, then you are sure to begin to enjoy the rewards of, of service. No, but let's move on. How do we make our service to deliver? What do we do for our service to qualify for the, for the terms and rewards? It is not just enough to be served, to serve. We must do it in a way that our service will deliver rewards. And for it to deliver the words, it must be acceptable. God must accept our service. So what are the things that we do that will make our service acceptable and it will deliver the words? One thing again in this first service, we must serve God as a privilege. As a privilege. Not as a burden. Serve God as a privilege, not as burden. Don't do it as if, ah, a mini Am I the only one? 
And why is it all me that you're always calling? I'm the only one coming for Samsung Keeper. They don't come. I'm the one that sweeping all, sweeping all the time. If you are not there, we will they wait to be done. See it as a privilege and do it. Get excited that even God could put it in your heart and you are the only one there. And do it with joy. Do it with joy. Do it with joy. You know the truth? I, I saw, I, I, God opened my eyes to a scripture recently. Luke 19. When Jesus was entering, you know today is, the, is even Palm Sunday. Amen. When Jesus was entering into Jerusalem, what we celebrate today as a Palm Sunday. All the Jews, the Jews in, in Jerusalem, they came out and they were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. You remember that story? And they brought out palm trees. They spread on the floor. They brought out their clothes. They spread on the floor. And then the leaders of the temple, the, the Pharisees and the leaders of the temple in, in, in Jesus' days, they looked at him that, what, what is the problem? Why are you just hyping a man the way they say that we have turned our pastors to God today? Why are you hyping a man? Why, why is it? Is it not this carpenter? What is it? This carpenter that you have just put on one... You just put him on unnecessary height. Stop this nonsense, this rubbish you are doing. Jesus told them. Are you with me? Luke 19. Let's read verse 40. Amen. Are you with me in church this morning? Grace to serve. I decree the release on you now. I say grace to serve comes on you now. It says in verse, verse 40. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I tell you that if this should hold their peace, if they refuse to do this service, to me and for me, the stones will do what? We take their place. Hold it and look at me. He made man from dust. So man is dust. He said, if dust does not do it, I have better offer. Between dust and stone, stone is more valuable. Stone is of more use. Any assignment God gives you to do a service, he has a stone that can do it in your place. What use do you have for the dust? Nothing. When you bring stone in, it will do better. So you just see that opportunity given to you as a privilege. You mess it up, somebody better will do it. Check in any church. Somebody is a drummer and he gets angry and he runs off. Just give it about two weeks. Somebody that can drum better than the former one will come. Why? You can't do shakara to God though. He's never short of men. He's only giving you a privilege because he has seen the way you are struggling and he wants to change your story. So stop all this one that if I'm not there, I can't do it. If you are not there, it will be done. And it will be done better. If you are not there, it will be done and it will be done in a better, far better way. He, look, if God has chosen you to do something, it's because you are a non entity. First Corinthians 1, verse 26. He chooses the base things. The rejected things. So when God chooses you to do something, it's because you are not really good. So that he can now engrace you and release ability on you. When you now do it, God cannot be glorified. Is it that God does not like the people that are good? No, he likes good people and good also. But when he gives an assignment, that's where something that he knows that you should just humble yourself and say, God has chosen me because I'm not good here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Lift your right hand now. Grace to serve acceptably. Receive it right now. Say Lord, Amen. So serve him as a privilege. You are to do something, jump at it, run at it, get excited at it. Don't drag your feet and be saying that eh, 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 eh. you have a meeting, unity meeting, and then you are now going there late for what? If there's no serious, uh, no real reason for it, just because you just feel I want to Baba Saleh. So you can come when you, then you are wrong. You are half it. You will not fail. Yeah. I might speak to someone. I say you will not fail. Yeah. What are the returns? What are the rewards? When we serve acceptably, what are the things that will return back? The blessings of God that will return back. And you see this one? God does not owe any man. God does not owe. Romans 13, 8. Hold no man, nothing. So when you serve, he has promised that he will bless when you are registered, when you are identified by heaven that you have served, 
your reward must come. If the reward is not coming, two things. Either you have not served to the point that the reward will fall, or probably it has, not, it has not been registered. So you keep doing it. You keep doing it until the reward falls. What are the rewards that will return to us? Number one is divine protection. And don't miss that out. Divine protection. Evil does not happen to you. Evil does not come near you. And you just overlook it because money is not coming. That God, what is happening? You are not blessing me. No, don't do that. Look around you very well. If money is not coming, check whether sickness is coming. When sickness is not coming, God is answering you. God is already rewarding you. Look, I was talking to my, my boy who, who, who drives me around now. And we were having a problem of tire was going down. Tire was deflating all the time. I said, have you paid your tight? I said, because I'm a tighter. My tire must not be deflating. You are the one driving my car now. You have not paid your tight. You have not paid your tight. He was saying, I said, you have not paid your tight. Don't even argue with me. My tire can not be deflating when I'm paying tight. I will not be using 200 and 500 to, to drive for what? That's a devourer. Say you are not paying your tight. He came quiet. It was more than that. I said, so pay your tight now. Or else I will collect the car from you. Somebody said that. Ah, ah. Pastor, so what little bay any? Oh, little bay. He, oh, he's that serious. God is faithful. When sickness is coming here, coming here, coming here, you're not going to hospital and do that. Just because uh, you are going to hospital and you have the money to do it and you are not bothering. What is that? He will guard you on every side. He said, what, why do you spend your money on that which is not bread? Protection. When you serve him, he said he will keep you. He will guard you. He will stay. His prayer will be with you that will forbid evil from happening around you. Lift your hand up now. From today, evil will not be mentioned concerning you. That amen can be louder and better. Matthew 16, 15 to 19. He said, go you to the world, preach all this world. He said, even when you do that, when you drink deadly things, it won't hurt you. You will pee serpent and scorpions, it won't, they won't be able to do anything. Why? His protection is guaranteed and sure. Hear me now. The last Evil report that you told of your life will be the last forever. That amen can be bigger and stronger. Number two reward, and I'll stop at that, is honor. Divine honor. Divine honor. Honor simply means you are being referenced. You are being esteemed. You are enjoying esteem from men beyond your natural qualification. I can't forget, I was... Uh, 1996, here at 1997, really, here at Lagos, I was going for a wedding, and I needed somebody to escort me, and then I told my younger cousin, he's a far junior cousin to me, far, far junior to me, but he, he has grown and big body, they have given him all the fertilizer to him, so he was bigger, he was bigger than me by size. So I said, okay, uh, young man, follow me to the wedding. He said, ah, I can't follow you. I said, why? He said, when they will say you should go and sit down there, they will just push me to the back as a child. I said, no, they won't push you. I said, follow me. So I placed my hand on him and I said that every honor they give to me, they will give to you. I said, so we went. I said, just be following me. Anyway, I just go. And when we came back, he said, uncle. He said, what? He said, do you know what happened today? He said, everyone that bowed to you, they were bowing to me. And I was just saying, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> I didn't notice it. He said, but man, I was feeling cool. Because when they bow to you, they will just bow to me also. Why? That is what we call honor. He was being given reference, esteem, respect, beyond what he should nature. If he had gone there by himself, they would look at him, Mama, don't go sit down there. But now, something came on, me, came on him, and then he was being now given the respect and reference. When you carry the honor of God in your life, nobody looks down on you. Even with your certificate. We will present your certificate as pass. Pass. Instead of saying, trash, this, failure. They will look at you and say, oh, pass, that's still okay. You still did well. They will still treat you more than in first class. Lift your title now. I decree the honor of God to rest on you. Now! I command the honor of God to come on your life now. Say louder, amen. And when we serve God, that's what happens. That's what happens. So your qualification will not matter again. It will be the cloak or the aura of God that will call honor. That will just be going before you and be opening doors. Now I speak to somebody now here. In the name of Jesus Christ from today, no door will close to you in life again. In the mighty name of Jesus. And what happens when we build the house of God, when we serve God to build the house, to bring souls to church, that much you gather, the Bible says that God is honored. 
Proverbs 14, 28. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. And when we honor God by the law of life, here on earth, he is bound. God is bound to return and honor our life also. So when we serve God by bringing money to the church and making the church to be big and to enlarge, God is honored, then we are now entitled to have his honor in return. And when God honors a man, men will honor him. From today, God will honor you. Lord, I receive grace to serve you. Lift your two hands, pray now, in your step position. Grace to serve you acceptably. To serve you in a way that I will enjoy the rewards and the return. Let that grace answer for me now. Answer for my life now. Answer for me now. Jesus, empower me by your spirit. Empower me to serve you right now. Oh God, this season must not leave me by. This season must speak in my life. Thank you, Lord. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. I decree the grace of God to become a registered servant of heaven comes on your life now. Say louder, amen. amen. Give us a big clap of an hour, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is our breaking generational crisis, and we'll be looking at this subject under this caption, Biblical Sources of Generational Crisis, and their cure. Crosses are real. Let me tell your friend, crosses are real. Say to another friend, crosses are real. Don't be afraid because they will be broken. Crosses are supernatural forces. Supernatural forces at work in individuals or in men that brings the life of the man to a total ruin. Forces, supernatural forces at work. Forces you can't see with the eyes, but you can't deny that they're at work. And their assignment is to bring the life of the individual to total ruin, irrespective of credential, efforts made, or help from others. Irrespective of credentials, efforts made, and help from others. These supernatural forces that are called Curses, they are negative in nature. They are out to bring the life to zero and negative. To erase the life and totally finish the life. In Genesis chapter 3, Amen. Verse, seven, verse 17, prior to this time, God had told Adam and he was enjoying it, that the land will bring out to you of his own accord and you can freely eat. But after this, uh, Adam committed the treason and then he disobeyed God. God came back and then said again, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice, of the, Lord, uh, the voice of your wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cost is the grant for your sake. Cost is the grant for your sake. He said, In sorrow shalt thou eat of it. All the days of your life. He said, Thorns also and thieves shall it bring to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. So you will labor, sweat, sweat, before it will bring something to you. That's the curse. There are forces that make the effort of a man not to count. They made the labor of a man to become a wasted labor. Agai chapter 1, verse 1, verse 1, 5, and then 9 to 10. Agai chapter 1, verse 1, 5 said, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in, the, in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Verse 5. Now, therefore, thus said the Lord, consider your ways. Okay, let's jump to verse, okay, verse 7, read verse 6. You look for more. That, okay, verse 6. You have so much and bring in little. Can you see? You so much, but you brought little in. That's the curse. You eat, but you are not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clutch it, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages does what? Earneth wages, wages into a bag with holes. Verse 9. Verse 9. To save our time, he says further in verse 9, you look for much 
alone. It was little you could gather. When you brought in even the little, a wind came and cleared it out, and you didn't see it again. A curse is a force at work. It can't be seen with the eyes, but it's devastating the, la- the life, destroying the, la- the life, and it's out to ruin that life. Lift your hand up now. Whatever is that force working devastation in your life, I command it terminated now. You believe that I hear you loud? They say amen. So please, causes are real. They can't be seen, but they are real. But hear me very well. One nature of causes is that when it is not broken, it will be transmitted to the next generation. Causes can be inherited when it is not broken. And when it is thus transmitted to the next generation, to the children, then it becomes a generational curse. That's what we call a generational curse. That is a negative force at work in the life of the individual, not being broken, is passed on to the children. So the children just begin to see those negative things happening without them knowing where it came from. Then we call it a generational curse. You see scriptures to, to prove that, Genesis 20, verse 4 to 5. So when you see a negative thing happening in the life of the parent, and you see the same in the life of the children, then it means it has been passed to them. It has been passed over to them. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was telling my wife this week, I said, you see, to the, with good understanding, my dad particularly started a connection with God. But he got it to a point, and the, the, by the help of God, he got it to a point, but was not able to go further. My duty is pushing it further to a height. And I said, we are pushing it to a point, then the children will have to now pick it up. We have put it to this point. Now we are moving to, they must move it to the next. And so I'm looking at the children of my children now, the life they'll be living. Why? By a programming. Praise God. When they are not broken, and when I'm saying that, it's conscious thing. Looking at the life of my father, looking at the life of my mother, consciously snipping some things. This one, this one, no, this one. Then to project a life. If they are not broken, they are passed on. I've said it on this altar. Before I married my wife, I looked at her, looked at her story. Don't let your children marry anywhere and anyhow. Look at the story. If you can't handle it, you better take edition. Amen. That's a digression, really. She was from a family, or she's from a family, wherein no woman stays in the husband's house. And I said, no problem. Okay, that one stops. This one stops. This one stops. Let's go. So that that will not go beyond for the children to be free forever. If they are not stopped, they naturally, whether you do anything or it will naturally go to them. And some people, even while you are still alive, you are seeing your children also, now also reflecting. Amen. Also reflecting. I came from a family. Sorry. I came from a family wherein what is what one plague of the devil is one demonic anger. Demonic anger. God help me clear that so that my children will not manifest that. So when you speak to my son sometimes and he gets to a point that he can pain him, he can just burst into, into cry. And I'll tell him, no, no, don't do that. That's going too far also now. Uh, no, he's only one that he's <laughs> You do something, ah, by the time we pounce on you, you, pay, you pick your spare parts. But that must not go over to the next. It must be nipped to the board. Lift your hand up now. Every negative force that has been trailing your lineage and has been devastating lives. I command them broken on your life now. And I decree your liberty. In Jesus' mighty name. But hear me very well. The good thing is this. Every curse has a curse. Has what is cursing it. Every curse, C-U-R-S-E, curse, Amen. Has a curse. A curse. What is cursing it? 
has a reason for it. Proverbs 26, verse 2. Amen. Are we together, church? Can you help me, studio, so that I went to village school? Write the word bold, curse, curse, C U R S E, on the screen, so that I'll be sure that everybody is following me. Studio, write that boldly on the screen for me, please. And then write the second word, curse, C A U S. Every curse has the cause for it. What is causing it? What is the reason for it? In Proverbs 26, verse 2, I'm still waiting for that, studio. Write that. Let me read from the, my, my Bible as I read this. Proverbs 26, verse 2. It says, As the bird by wandering, as a swallow by flying, it says, so the curse, causeless, shall not come. The curse, causeless, shall not come. The curse that has no cause shall never come. The curse that has no cause for it can never exist. So when you see a curse at work or a curse at work in the life of a man, the reason for that curse is there is a cause for it. There is a reason for it. So it becomes easy. When you take out, when you identify the curse, okay? Make it bold. Make it a bit, cool, a bit bold, please. Studio. Every curse, every curse has a cause. Look at it on the, on the board, on the screen, everybody. The first word, the second word there, curse, is the negative force. But for every of such curse, there is a cause. What is causing it? So when we identify the cause of that curse and we clear it out, the curse will be broken. Oftentimes, what we do in the church is we pray to break curses. No. There's a place for it, but that's not the way to do it. Most times, we just deal with symptoms that way. But to root out the thing, we must identify the curse of it. What is the cause of this? And it's very easy to do. So quickly, what we'll do this morning is we'll look at the, the causes or the sources of cases. And then we we'll prefer the solution to each one. So that you just identify, oh, you don't shame me. This is the one that is my problem. And then this is the solution. And then you change. You do what has been professed as a solution, and then you are out. Is somebody here this morning? Is somebody here this morning? The first cause we look at is the curse of God. The curse of God. God do curse. He cursed man in the days of Adam. Genesis 3, we read it, 17 to 19. He cursed Cain, Genesis 4, 9 to 12. And that is God making negative pronouncement on a man. He said, the land is cursed for your sake. It won't produce for you again. That's a negative pronouncement. That's a curse. And from that day, the land was no longer producing. But for God to do that to a man, God, the man has done certain things. Let's look at two things that a man will do. No matter what negative pronouncement that has come from God, that will be reversed and will be changed. Two things. Number one, Commit to obey God. Make a commitment to obey God. Whatever that has made God to, make, to pronounce negative, negative thing over a man, it's summed down to one thing, disobedience. He said something, you disobeyed it. That was what brought the curse on man in the days of Adam. That was what brought the curse on Cain. And take anywhere you see God make a negative pronouncement, it will be the disobedience of the man. So, to be out of the curse of God, what we need is a commitment to obeying God. Look at it. When God says, give me your heart, give your life over to me, I give you Jesus, take him so that you can have life. And say, I know take. You are disobeying. 
You are disobeying. And that's why, you see, life will just be hard and you not be wondering what is happening. It's because of disobedience. Many believers, many in church, at the root of their hard life is nothing but their disobedience. Their life of disobedience that has kept them waggling and wailing and struggling under the curse of God. You are coming out this morning. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. If you are acting diligently to the verse of the Lord God, and you observe to do all that I command you today, say the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2 says, and all these blessings shall come on you. That means God will pull you out of curses, set you up into the realm of blessing, where you become an amazement to men by the choice to be God. Hear me very well. Obedience to God or the life of obeying God does not reduce. It is what will bring man into a life of glory and envy. Number two, to come out of the curses of God is serve God. Serve God. Serve God. When we serve God with joy, with joyfulness, serving God connects the believer to blessing. And when the blessing comes on the believer, curses are broken. But it is not just about serving God, but serving him with a joyful heart. Deuteronomy 28, 47 to 48. If you will serve God with joy, because they serve not the Lord, they are God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. He said they will serve their enemies. Say with me, God forbid. Number two curse. The curse of the law. The curse of the law. And this is talking about when an individual makes the choice or lives a style, a lifestyle of that, a lifestyle that is contrary to what God says. That is what brings the curse of the law on a man. Living the life or living a life that is in contrast to what God says, to God's instruction, to God's commandment, to the ways of God. It will bring a man under the curse of the law, which is very devastating. You see that in Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 to 66. So when a man is living a life that is in disagreement to what God says, to what God wants, to what God instructs, he might seem to, he might be telling himself, and people might be telling him he's enjoying life. No. Is living under what we call the curse of the law. And don't forget, any curse is out to ruin a life. Your life will not be ruined. So, God says, don't, uh, don't, don't commit immorality. And then he says, man, I won't go live like that. I won't go, go live without that. You will just see all manner of things that will be happening. Don't steal. So how one go survive for this Nigeria without stealing? You just see things not working. But you can live in agreement with God's laws and still enjoy a great life. I can tell you that for, for free. Because my life is, is an example of that. No cost will survive in your life again. Yeah. What is the way out of the cause of the law? Two things. One, be born again. Be born again. Genesis, uh, Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So at the point of salvation, Christ comes to take a man from every curse of the law. And number two is stay in love with God. Stay in love with God. The love of God brings a man under the blessings of God that makes things work. Romans 8, 28. Amen. Let me take one more and then we we'll, we'll close. Number three curse is the curse of devils. I intentionally want to take this because that is the cheapest. The cross of devils. This is when the devil, through any of his agents, enchants, cast a spell, or make a negative pronouncement on you, on a man. And the devil does that a lot. But hear me very well. When it is the devil, it's very cheap. Because the way out, two things. Number one, be born again. When a man becomes born again, 
he has been elevated to a place where the devil cannot come near. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, and chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. As long as you are an unbeliever, then whatever the devil says and his agent says will work. But when you become a believer, no matter what they say, is irrelevant. What they say is not is of no consequence. Even they are, they are in danger. When they speak against you, God says, He that bless you, I will bless. He that crosses you, I will cross. So when you know you as a believer and a witch send a curse on you, you should be ready to take it in multiply food. And number two, for us to be free from the curse of devils is commitment to serving God. When we commit to serving God, Luke chapter 10, he says, no devil will be able to harm us. Luke 10, 17 to 19. So, as I close, curses are real. Luke 10, 17 to 19, let me clear that. 17, please. Verse 17. And the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils were what? That is what happens when you become a disciple. Satan becomes subject. And when he's now subject, he cannot be speaking to you. And then it will be working. So don't tell me one which is doing you. The question is, are you born again? Are you serving God? Rise up on your feet. Hear me very well. It is true that crosses are real. Yes, crosses are real. And we are not denying it. Somebody might be, somebody say, hear me, look at me. Some people say that, don't mind all this person, this, this, this in Africa and Nigeria, that they are breaking courses all the time, breaking courses all the time, yet our country is not going, is not doing better. Go to, go to Europe, go to America, they are not breaking courses, but they are living well and their nation is doing fine. You don't understand anything. When you see any man talking like that, he doesn't have understanding. Go and check their story and their history. Whether their country was as good as this in some years ago. 300 years ago, 400 years ago, 600 years ago. They are passed through what we are going through now. Their founding fathers took responsibility to institute a nation. And they were instituted on the word of God. These things we are doing now, they did it then. To break everything the enemy has planted in the past. And instituted the blessing of God on the nation. So they began to enjoy it. Now, those nations are going down now. Why? The children of today, they have despised God. And they are reverting back. If you go to the streets of Europe, European country, you will see magicians displaying. When we were small, the magicians used to display either on the street. And they come to Africa and they say that uh, what the barbaric people. Barbaric people. Those barbaric acts that we are doing there is what we are doing. Go to this their live show, Talent Hunt. You see magicians come to one with them, and they'll be clapping and they'll be laughing. You see a witch, a sorcerer, you will come, I'm a sorcerer. And you say, I'm a sorcerer, I'm a witch. And they will be laughing. They say, hey, wonderful. Their country is going down. Why? They are going back to the crosses. So don't tell me that what we are doing is stupid. We are rebuilding the nation. We are reprogramming Nigeria. We are, replace, we are, we are flushing out the devil and bringing in God. What will become of, of us in two years? What will become of us in five years? What will become of us in 10 years if Jesus has not returned? If they will not be coming back to land. Watch. So if you like, call us stupid. When we move, we will go with the glory. No one will be left behind. Am I talking this morning? Those causes must be broken so that you can go forward and your children can be safe. Are you getting now? Those causes must be broken. You must break it on, forget about Nigeria, break it on your life. When you break it on your life, and your children are also free from it, you have delivered Nigeria to a little extent. And then you also break it on your life and your children, that your children will go to the market field and they will stand for Jesus because they have been programmed there. Nigeria is getting better. And your own children, and your own children, and your own children, we stand and stand for righteousness that the men will not beat their wife. The men will not fornicate. The men, the ladies will not go out to, with any strong or anyone that's not there. We, we have positioned Nigeria for, for a life of blessing. That is how we make nations. Lord, help me this morning. Help me to stand right with you and disconnect from everything that makes for a cursed life.
I receive grace. Are you sure you are praying? I receive grace. Bredo kapo bida jagade rozozia brede gedesh neni nana bukato padia jadash. Help me, O God. Help me, O God, to reposition my life from under crosses. Bring it under 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 blessing. Help me, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Clap for just please be seated. Amen. Something is happening in everyone's life this morning. Everything that has held your destiny down, they are giving way now. Amen. Hear me? Some people, you walk out of this service this morning, the things you have been looking for, men will bring to you. Amen. Men will bring to you. Amen. The things that has never worked, you walk out of this morning, and then you get back home, you are seeing it working already. Amen. I mean, the pains you have been suffering, the aches that you have been carrying along, all along, before you sleep tonight, you will look for it, you won't see it again. Yeah. Why? God has walked you out of the crosses. Yeah. But hear me very well. If you check all the crosses, the, 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 the breaking of those crosses largely rests on the individual. How? What has caused this? And this is a cross, then what do I do to be out? Until that is done, Praying any prayer of breaking crosses might be useless. Take for example now. You always wish people not to do it because you are not doing well. When you hear good news about somebody, oh, praise God. But deep inside you, it's proud. It's proud. And when you are saying that, the next thing is, I wish this thing just disappear now. If you don't know, you are a witch. Oh, you don't know what witchcraft is? You are, um, you are just playing the game of a witch. You are already sending evil to the person. And do the seed you sow is the best you have. Amen? Amen. So it's about this. All these causes is about ourselves. The first thing that can we bring any man out of all causes is Jesus. Help me. You see your life not going well. You see that voices are against you. Things are not working. You see things only that you can't explain. You just know that you put in effort and the effort not working. The first thing is to acknowledge things are not working. My efforts are not meeting up. I put in effort, they are not working. And I want to be free. And the only way to be free is Jesus. Jesus, help me. When you do that and you do it sincerely, it will take over your life and change your story. If that is who I'm talking about now, let's pray with you. Rest of your feet, if that's you. This morning, Jesus, it, it, my efforts are not working. Jesus, I'm here for a change of story. Rest of your feet, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Jesus, I need a change of story. You are rising, pick your Bible, come to the front quickly. Come to the front quickly. Please, still was assisted. Still was assisted. Don't miss this service. Don't miss this opportunity. At the back, in the front, at the middle, anywhere you are, you know that the only ghost is talking to you now. The only ghost is talking about you now. Things are not working. Your efforts are not producing. You are standing. Pick your Bible, wherever you are. Or you are still seated, but you know the Holy Ghost is pointing to you now. I refer to you. Run here now. Run here now. Run here now. Run here now. Church, clap louder for Jesus. Run here now. He never caused the seed of Jacob to seek in vain. He never brings his children for the fall of it. He is calling you now. Come, let me identify you as those that are ready for a change of story. You have been battered, 